Hello, I'm Hans Vajé, and I'm here to offer some thoughts on um, one of Thomas Mann's most interesting and important lectures, Germany and the Germans. Uh, he, uh, he delivered this address at the uh, Library of Congress um, in his capacity as a consultant in Germanic literature at the American National Library. He did so in, um, in March and April of 1945, that is to say, at a time when the, uh, when the eagerly awaited end of Hitler Germany was imminent. This was then a time for him for reflection and uh, for a profound soul searching in order to comprehend the deep and fundamental factors that had made possible the catastrophe that was Hitler and National Socialism. Germany and the Germans is truly a key document for the understanding of Mann's work and on three essential levels, the literary, the political, and the autobiographical. First, the literary. Mann wrote this speech while he was at work on Dr. Faustus, the dark novel contemplating the concatenation of German music and German catastrophe. This speech may thus be read as a commentary on Dr. Faustus as one of its hypertexts, if you will. He began write, to write it just after completing chapter 24 of the novel. That chapter is commonly referred to as the conversation with the devil. More aptly, it ought to be read as an act of self-examination on the part of the novel's hero, Adrian Leverkuhn, an avant-garde composer with Faustian ambitions. Germany and the Germans may rightly be viewed as an extension of the novel's central chapter. It continues on a discursive plane what chapter 25 of Dr. Faustus presents on the symbolic plane. Second, the political. Given the historical context of Mann's Washington address, its political significance is obvious. He delivered it on May 29th, 1945, that is to say, three weeks after Germany's unconditional surrender. Mann's speech was one of the first, one of the very first attempts to confront honestly and unsparingly the deeply vexing question that was uppermost on the minds of many people at that time, both in America and in Europe. The question is, how was it possible that Hitler happened, that Hitler could happen in Germany, the land of Bach and Beethoven, of Goethe and Schiller? Thomas Mann identifies several factors, but deals chiefly with two namely the Germans' twisted notion of freedom and the Germans' tendency to privilege inwardness over politics. By inwardness, the German word is innerlichkeit, he means the historical tendency to prefer and to honor music above politics. By doing so, Mann sparked a debate that two de decades later, the historians were to take up with a vengeance in the famous historica debate, historica debatte. It's a debate about Germany's so-called Sonderweg, its special path that led her to deviate from the road that the Western democracies had taken. Third, the autobiographical. Germany and the Germans, furthermore, represents a landmark 
in man's understanding of himself. During the 14 years of exile in the United States, he was widely perce uh, perceived as the figurehead of the other Germany, the good Germany, as opposed to Hitler's Germany. Mann came to realize that things were more complicated and less comforting than that convenient dichotomy. He now declares that there is only one Germany, a Germany that is good and evil at the same time, a kind of Jekyll and Hyde among nations. Most impressively, and this may be taken as a measure of his moral stature, most impressively, he admits that the elements of that Jekyll and Hyde character of Germany uh, are, is not only in others, but also in himself. Like Dr. Faustus then, Germany and the Germans may be read as a deeply moving confession of complicity, at least on a mental level. Mann's Washington speech appeared as a brochure both in the United States and in post-war Germany and met with widely differing responses. In America, the speech was received with what one might call respectful incomprehension. In Germany, it met with resentment and flat-out rejection. Germans felt that Mann had gone too far in his search for the mental and psychological roots of the German catastrophe, all the way back to Luther and the legendary Dr. Faustus, who enlisted the devil's help in order to achieve his sinister goals. Today, in Germany and beyond, this speech is widely acknowledged as comprising the mother of all debates about Germany, specific, specifically about the deeper causes of Germany's descent into barbarism. Its distinction rests on Mann's decision to look beyond the usual suspects and immediate triggers, such as the Versailles Treaties, the world economic crisis, and German unemployment, and to attempt to lay bare the mental and psychological predispositions that facilitated the rise of Hitler. Mm -hmm.